Have you ever been tantalized by a delicious cake while on a diet? There's a part of you that screams, go for it. Another part that calmly suggests, think about the calories, and a silent judge reminding you of your New Year's resolution. And it's not just about the cake. We hear these voices in our head almost every time when we are trying to make a decision. But what are these conflicting voices? Where do they come from? Why do they seem to have a life of their own? Is it just me who hear these voices or everyone? Sigmund Freud, who is often referred to as the father of modern psychology, answered all these questions in his psychoanalytic theory of personality, which forever changed our understanding of the human mind. Today we are going to explore this intriguing concept and we'll find answers about our personality, how our mind works, why does it work the way it does, and how can we have a healthy personality. Let's get started. Our mind work on three different levels, conscious, pre-conscious, and unconscious. Conscious level contains the thoughts and information that we are currently aware of, like watching this video and its content. Pre-conscious contains the thoughts and information that we are not currently aware of, but can bring into consciousness easily or with little effort, like when asked what day is today. You don't instantly answer the question, but takes few moments to bring that information from pre-conscious level to consciousness. Last, unconscious level contains thoughts and information that are there, but you are not aware of them or can't recall them easily. The first part of our personality, according to Sigmund Freud, is the eyed. It is the most primitive and instinctive component of our personality and works completely in unconscious part of the brain. It is the most powerful component of our personality and the source of all psychic energy. Eid is very selfish and works on pleasure principle, driven by desires, impulses, and needs. It needs instant gratification in any way possible. It is the only part of our personality that is present from birth and other parts are developed later. A newborn baby is completely eyed. That's why a hungry baby will keep on crying until fed. Now you know why newborn babies cry a lot, as driven by only pleasure and needs. They seek instant satisfaction. In the earlier cake example, the first voice you hear in your head, that screams, go for it, comes from eyed. Driven by pleasure principle, it wants to eat the cake and wants to eat it now. Eid never grows up and remains infantile throughout life because it has no connection with the external world as it operates completely in unconscious brain. Eid only creates demands, and when a demand goes unmet, it can create stress and tension. Since, in the real world, we cannot get everything instantly, a mechanism called primary process comes into play whenever tension is created. Primary process tries to relieve the tension by creating a mental image of the object or thing which I'd wants. For example, you are very hungry but unfortunately stuck in traffic and there is no restaurant or eating shop for next 30 minutes. Since you can't get food soon, primary process comes into play and creates a mental image of food or an image of you eating the food to temporarily satisfy the hunger. Another example, suppose you have a crush on someone and wants to be their partner, but you don't know how to approach them, or what if they don't feel the same way? Now the thought of being rejected or not being together creates tension. To relieve it, primary process comes into play and shows you the mental image of you two being together and having fun. Now you know why you keep fantasizing about your crush and having intimate moments with them. I consists of two instinctive drives. First is Eros instinct, also called life instinct. It contains life-preserving and enhancing ways, like eating, breathing, etc. The second one is Thanatos instinct, also known as death instinct. It is mainly channeled outwards towards others and manifests in the form of aggression. It is the reason we tend to be aggressive towards others who hurt us or makes us uncomfortable. The second part of our personality, according to Sigmund Freud, is the ego. It is the rational part of the psyche and is driven by reality principle. Ego emerges around the age of two to three years and is modified by direct influence of the external world and reality. It is present in conscious, pre-conscious, and unconscious part of the brain, but operates mainly from conscious brain. 
It is the decision-making component of our personality and works by reason. Just like I'd, ego also seeks pleasure but tries to fulfill these desires in a realistic and socially acceptable way, which causes no harm to self. Ego makes decisions by weighing pros and cons of every action. In the cake example, another part that calmly suggests, think about the calories, comes from the ego. When I'd wanted to eat the cake, ego looked at the desire and fitness goals and suggested to think about the calories. If you don't control eating habits, there is no point of fitness goals. Ego mainly engages in secondary process thinking, which is rational, realistic, and oriented towards problem solving. Sometimes, when ego is unable to fulfill Ide's demand and cannot control the impulses, unpleasant feelings arise which might lead to emotional conflict or stress. During such time, unconscious part of ego comes into play and starts to deploy defense mechanisms to avoid unpleasant feelings. Some examples of defense mechanisms are denial, repression, projection, etc., and we'll discuss them in detail in another video. These defense mechanisms are deployed unconsciously, and conscious brain have no knowledge of them being deployed. We only come to know about them at a later stage when we look at that event or situation in the past. Sigmund Freud used the analogy of horse and the rider to describe the relationship between the eyed and the ego. Eyed is like the horse, powerful, wild, and seeks immediate gratification. In absence of the rider, Eid wanders here and there as it sees fit to fulfill all the needs and desires. Ego is like the rider, who gives direction and guidance to the horse. Rider doesn't suppress the power of the horse, but manages its energy and strength in a way that is safe and productive. The third and the last part of our personality, according to Sigmund Freud, is the superego. It emerges around the age of four to five years and works strictly on morality principle. It operates in conscious, pre-conscious, and unconscious part of the brain. Superego contains all the moral and standards that we learn from our parents, society, and culture. It the judge of right and wrong. In contrast of ego living in reality, superego wants to live an idealistic life. In the cake example, a silent judge reminding you of your New Year's resolution is the superego. The superego strives for perfection working to suppress the urges of the eyed and persuade the ego to strive for moralistic goals rather than just realistic ones. It is seen as the purveyor of rewards and punishments for our behavior. When we do something good, superego rewards us with feelings of pride and satisfaction, like after achieving a goal or completing a milestone. In case of bad behavior, it punishes with the feelings of guilt and shame like when stealing something or not finishing a task in time. Now you know why you sometimes feel guilty after doing something because in the back of the mind you somehow know that you did wrong. Superego consists of two systems. First is conscience, also known as inner voice. It includes information about things and behaviors that are considered bad and are often forbidden. It contains this information in the form of commands and don't statements which are issued unconsciously. It is mainly influenced by parents, culture, and society we live in. Second system is ego ideal, also known as ideal self. It is like an image we have of our ideal selves, the person we want to become. This image is often modeled after people we hold up as the standard of who we are striving to become, like a celebrity, sports person, or businessman, etc. Eyed ego and the superego are always interacting with each other and sometimes conflict, and the outcome of this interaction is our behavior and defines our personality. The key to a healthy personality, according to Sigmund Freud, is the balance between the eyed, the ego and the superego. The ego should have enough strength to mediate between the eyed and the superego and take decisions based on reality. Imagine them as different characters in a movie, each with a different agenda. The eyed is the impulsive child, driven by desire and pleasure. The superego is a strict parent, enforcing rules and morals. The ego is the mediator, who tries to satisfy both without causing any conflict. Their interaction defines all our big and small decisions, 
From choosing what to eat, how to react in a conflict, to making significant life decisions, it is a continuous balancing act. According to Sigmund Freud, mental health issues arise when there is an imbalance between them. An individual with over-dominant eyed might become impulsive or even uncontrollable. Such an individual acts upon their urges without any concern of their behavior, whether it's acceptable or appropriate. On the other hand, an individual with over-dominant superego might lead to extremely moralistic and judgmental personality. Such an individual might not accept anything that is below perfection. A well-functioning ego is essential for maintaining a healthy balance, allowing us to live fulfilling and socially responsible lives. Understanding the dynamics of the eyed ego and superego not only provides insights into our own behaviors, but also helps us comprehend the actions of others. Thank you for watching, and if you learned something new, please share and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more intriguing concepts of human psychology.